Well today I've decided to wire up the GPS com nav panel, whatever you want to call it, and uh, started off trying to solder these, basically these dual concentric controls onto the tiny little circuit boards that they came with. And uh, that didn't really work very well. I think it, I mean, it's just too fiddly. I can't, I can't get that done reliably. So then of course I couldn't get the damn board back off so I had to make a slight diversion. I'm going to town and get myself a solder soccer Maplins. Luckily we've got a localish Maplins. <laughs> so short motorbike journey later. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that's going to allow me to get that board off and then I'll just solder wires onto the individual tags. Well, that was fun. I've got to tell you, these little dual concentric controls are an absolute nightmare to solder. Uh, the tags are very close together. I also discovered at some point after removing the circuit board from the first one that um, I was a pin short. So the pins are very, not only very close together and thin, but they're very fragile. Anyway, I've managed to recover from that and um, luckily there was a bit of a tag still sticking out of the component I managed to solder onto that so we've got this one guy it's the only components I've got soldered so far here on the board so um, hopefully that's robust enough to survive being chucked about a little bit uh, if I was doing this again what I'd probably do is before mounting it try and solder it onto the circuit board. Oh, well that's halfway. We've got all the um, got the earths or the grounds wired up now together on this panel. Hopefully maybe get a bit of a glimpse of that. And that includes the second uh, and, I've, and I've wired up in total the second dual concentric control as well. So we've got a bit of a head start on the, on the signal wiring. So I'm going to do all of that next. On suffering strip of land, full access to the outside world. Never going to be paid back. Uh, for every pound they've already written off something like 49 pence. Do you know what would have made slightly more sense financially when you had... Team. Um, to me, this would be a fantastic one for them. They can adapt it to the Gold Coast and I think it would be terrific for them. So backlighting, I've been putting this off long enough. I need to be thinking about it at least as I go. Um, so what can I tell you? Well, I've got a couple of, I, I don't really know yet how I'm going to do the backlighting successfully. Um, I've got a couple of ideas and I'm starting to think about experiments. Um, I've got, where's the box? These things I got from Maplin, these are LED lights and uh, you get six of these in a pack and I think it's basically one LED with a sort of frosted um, diffuser on the front there and they, these plug into um, they're sort of daisy chained well they're not daisy chained I mean they're um, I think they're wired up in parallel to a 12 volt transformer I mean I, bought, I just bought these because I I didn't really, you know, have no real idea what's going to work well for this. Um, my initial experiments suggest that because this is just thin paper, essentially, any direct backlighting, unless it's extremely diffuse, is going to show hot spots through the paper. So my, my initial idea is to this. This is uh, the panel I'm working on at the minute. This is the GPS panel. The initial idea is to point these lights away from the panel itself, so we're still behind the panel but if I mount the lights so they're pointed away and then mount some sort of reflector which at the moment is white paper seems to be you know good, as good as anything or maybe a piece of white painted hardboard or something would be more robust so that, um, that what that's doing is it's doing two things, it's attenuating the light so it's not too bright but it's also diffusing it fairly effectively. I've had a go at that just very, very approximately and that shows some promise, shall we say. 
One thing I'm going to say is the lighting, the back lighting, is not going to look like it looks in the Twin Otter Extended Virtual Cockpit. That's very bright and unrealistically bright, I think. If it was really that bright in the cockpit, it would probably dazzle you. But in practical terms, I'm not going to be able to get it that bright either because, of the, as I say, the, um, the, the, the black on the um, printed insert of the panel just isn't going to block that intensity of light. So, so it's going to be quite subtle and I um, don't know how well this will show up when it's eventually done. But it's not going to look super impressive on video, I'm sure. But but um, you know, my goal really is to make this panel readable in dim light or in the dark. And and so actually, even very subtle illumination is going to be enough as long as I can read the captions. That's all we want. Um, the other option I've got is some. I haven't looked at this yet. I'm just uh, I've had this sitting here. Received this a couple of years ago for a game from Protopic. You might remember. Got these nice plastic boxes. Um, this is hopefully some samples of these electroluminescent materials. So that's uh, that's going to be an inverter to drive these. This I think these things run on AC, but from a DC source. So this presumably converts AC from uh, sorry DC from four AAA batteries this one. You can get a mains powered one of these. This is going to be the ultimate sort of... Okay, now this. This looks like... Um, well, in fact, let's look at this one first. This is an electroluminescent panel. It basically looks it's just like a little plastic panel. Uh, why has it got a sticker on? Presumably that sticker's on the non-active side. 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres white. So the idea is you plug this into the, that box and it glows. And oh, my battery's about to run out, so I'll have to resume this later. So as I was saying, we've got this um, electroluminescent panel, 10 centimetres square. It's it's nominally white, but uh, actually I think it's going to be blue when it's illuminated, sort of bluish white, um, which is okay. I mean, as long as it's reasonably neutral. The idea is you plug that into this, um, I've actually powered this up now, I've, I've, um, while I was waiting for the camera battery to charge back up I've, I've had a go with this. In fact I'll show you these in the dark in a little while. So, um, so, so we got that, then I've got an idea that one of these will do one panel. This panel's a difficult one to do because as you recall it's got the, it's got the VGA screen sits in the middle of this panel and it protrudes in, into the um, interior so I think one of these panels should easily cover one 30 centimeter square panel again I'll have to decide I mean that that's assuming I use this as a direct light source it's going to be a little bit more tricky to use this as an indirect reflected light source because it's so big if I, if I use the same trick as I was suggesting with the little um, LED spots and a reflector on the back, obviously this this is going to in, not only project the light but it's going to intrude and cast a shadow. So the other alternative is, along with this, I mean I only bought one of these to experiment with, but I've got this as well which is the same stuff but it's on a, it's on a tape essentially. And uh, this is what 60 centimeters, I think. This is. I mean, you can cut this. It, um, th there's two connectors on here. I can cut this in the middle or cut it anywhere, so I can have two lengths. It'd be nice to have four lengths. I'll be able to do some sort of, um, you know, contortion trick to do this panel if I, well, with, with the tape. I, I could, if I could, if I could somehow use that tape to cover. Basically, one strip along here, one strip on the top, one strip down each side. That should give me the coverage I need as a direct light source. Again, I'm not sure how the shadows and stuff will pan out, because obviously we've got quite a thick bundle of wires here. We'll see, it's not going to be perfect. There's a lot of experimenting still to do. So we've got that to experiment with. And I've got this, um, you remember my original panel 
this is awaiting a real. I'm, I'm imminently going to take this apart and redo it. But before I do that, I want to get around to the backlighting experiments, just because this retains the um, the original method of generating the insert, which is the which is two acetates, or it might be three acetates. Can't remember now. So again, I want to just compare that and contrast it with the paper inserts. Um, honestly, I'm just curious about that. There's no chance at all of me dismantling these panels that I've wired up to replace the inserts. <laughs> that would just, well, it would be impossible. Um, if I can see these controls in the dark, they've got a slight luminescence about them. That's all I need, and that's all I want, really. Glasgow, and me as Mummy are in a camper van looking over at the clouds. If you can hear, it's good to see the light tonight. It's something interesting. Yeah, we hear complaints from consumers, and so one of the things is from the website, from the emails, occasionally still like this. Then it's the the company that took the often often makes stuff. So it's saving private run, it's yes. two minutes just so it's now that feed into this. Um, and how do we make this collectivity that's also uh, in There it is. That's uh, 10 to 8 on the same day and that's that panel finally done. Just finished the umbilical, uh, which is a pretty hefty one. This is the this is the you'll recall the most complicated panel of the lot. This is the GPS Navcom. It's got 34 components on there, and that's a total of 43 signals and one ground. 44 wires in this bundle, and. Next thing to do, well, I've got to stick the screen back into it, obviously, and uh, wire it up to the controller, and then I can try it out. I've, I've already created all the functions that I need for this, all the lower functions, so it's basically ready to go. Once I plug this into the board, I can just go into Linda and program up the switches. Bloody hell, another sh showstopper for the minute. I just thought, well, I'll just put this back together. Stick the screen into the panel, connect the panel up, and we're off. But no, um, there's not enough space to put in the VGA cable. Uh, not quite. There's a button in the way. <laughs> so what I'm going to have to do, basically, I'm going to have to manufacture, or maybe buy, but probably manufacture an extension for the VGA connector on the monitor. It needs to come through 90 degrees. All right, that should do it, but uh, going to be a couple of days delay. I think I'll wire up the panel without the screen on in the meantime, just so I can check out the switches 